Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sabine. Today we are going to bring you a replay of one of my favorite quilts and that is grid work. This quilt was inspired by the 1950s tile in my bathroom floor, which I finally recovered uh, with new tile when we did a bathroom remodel. And we have a new quilt actually that is inspired by the new tile called Subway. But back to grid work. So I have two quilts inspired by my bathroom tile, which I know sounds Silly. but you know you take your inspiration from anywhere but uh, we get, recently got a new collection in from Shell Rummel it's called Touchstones I love Shell Rummel I have an entire Shell Rummel shelf of quilts that I have made because I have made something with every single collection she has put out but two or maybe but one but I have kept the others for like someday when I have a little bit more time to work on it. And this is no different. I'm definitely keeping one of these for myself to add to the Shell Rummel collection to make something fabulous with someday. And I might do grid work out of it. We'll have to see. But I wanna show you guys the fabric. It's absolutely gorgeous. We have bundles for it. We are gonna have kits for grid work and then we're gonna do the replay for it. This is a great quilt because it goes together really fast and uses really big pieces. And so some strip piecing so it really kind of goes together pretty quick it's available in one size only because of the way it goes together we make three or four different sections that all piece together and it just is a fun way to make it work and I love the way this turned out and it allows the fabric to really shine in a nice big way which is perfect for a collection like this where the fabric is just absolutely gorgeous it's all been inspired by Shell's watercolor prints and I've got one of those in my bathroom too. I love Shell. I've interviewed her a couple of times for our designer chat, so we'll link those in the video description down below so you can get to know her a little better. But let's take a peek at this beautiful, beautiful fabric. So this is what the kit looks like when you're gonna get it. She is inspired by the coast. It's like a modern coastal design. And so we have this nice mix of the peaches as well as the sort of sea colored prints. And when we look through it, you're gonna see the watercolor that has inspired all of this. It's absolutely gorgeous. We're gonna start with this really big focal print. It's absolutely gorgeous. It looks like the sea at sunset. It looks like you've got your ocean waves getting deeper and darker, and then you have your sunset and your sky above. It's just absolutely fabulous, and the repeat is great. So the other side of the fabric looks exactly like this. So if you get a fat quarter, you're gonna get the same thing on either side, and it just is gorgeous. So when we cut this up, depending on where you use it, you're gonna get a little bit different look, um, but it's just absolutely stunningly gorgeous. Next up we have some beautiful flowers and the watercolor is really coming through in this as you can see the subtle shade differences and variations. It takes a lot of time to get the screen printing to look and mimic watercolor and they just always do a fabulous job between her teaming up with Free Spirit. Next up we have some sand dollars and some deep blues and greens just absolutely stunning. Here's that floral print again this time in those peaches, pinks, and a little bit of yellow. This to me looks like sea glass. And one of the things that Shell likes to do to inspire her work is to just roam the beach and pick up her finds as she goes away. So she has this massive collection of shells, sea glass, things that she's found on the beach to help inspire her. And I think that's where this came from. Here's that sand dollar again. This time we have those oranges and that peachy orange again, but that blue is really setting it off and making it look spectacular. This looks like the ripples that are made in the sand as the waves go in and out, and it is just really pretty, and it's gonna look great with some of these deeper, darker blues, and also setting off the oranges since they're across the color wheel from each other. This just looks fantastic. Next up, we have some wavy cross-hatched lines. Kinda looks like sea foam to me with the little dots in between. Next up, we have some smaller sand dollars, and it's in one of my favorite tealy colors. And that white kind of changes a little bit in its consistency depending on how much it's layered over one another. Looks really adorable. Uh, well, I'm gonna turn it this way because this is like stacked pebbles, and actually I have the print that inspired this in my bathroom. So it looks really, really good. It's a very tranquil print. It makes my bathroom feel very tranquil to have it in there with all white everywhere else. Here we have a very vibrant show-stopping piece, much like the first one that we looked at where there's just a whole lot going on. It looks like a mix of like different seashells and just layers of sediment, and it just looks fantastic. We've got a little bit of all the colors that you're going to see in here, so anything that you pair with this is gonna help make oranges pop, help make blues pop, 
the little more teal sagey green ones. It just is so fun and this would look great big. So grab yardage of this while you can. And we're gonna finish up with a blue with a little hint of green in it of that surfy wavy lines look. All right, so here we have Touchstones by Shell Rommel for Free Spirit. Once again, I'm grabbing a fat quarter of this to be in my stash, maybe a whole quilt kit, we'll have to see. Um, but it's absolutely gorgeous. You can get the grid work quilt kit, you can get fat quarter half yard or yard bundles of it, depending on how much you love it and need it in your life. We also have yardage available. So make sure you grab that while you can. And let's get on with the tutorial of grid work. I think you're gonna love this one because it's really gonna show off the fabric in all its glory. All right, so there's a couple of different size uh, main prints that you're going to cut from your fat quarters. And then you'll have background strips as well. And essentially all of them are gonna to go together the exact same way. You're gonna have a main print and then we're gonna sew a strip to the top and we're gonna sew a strip to the side. And it's always gonna be on the same side so that way we can assemble these and it will just create this nice grid structure. And it is going, if you've ever done like a Lego assembly diagram, with your kids or your grandkids. It kind of goes together a little bit like that, where you do a little bit of this and you do a little bit of that, and then it all comes together and makes this cool thing all at the end. Um, and all of that is detailed in the in the pattern that goes along with this, which you can get at shop.quiltaddictsanomas.com. Just search for grid work. But the block, uh, putting it together, super fast, super simple. I'm gonna show you how to do it now. So no matter what size you're working with, you're always going to put your main print from your fat quarters in the center and then you're going to have your strips from your background on the top and the side. So I'm going to start just by attaching my top strip and in ones like this a lot of them are, are pretty wide like this and I was sewing and I didn't have too much of a problem with these you know stretching on each other but I have been sewing for a very long time and I know how to work with that. So if you are more of a newbie this is what I recommend you do just to kind of keep things in line. What you're gonna do is you're gonna line up your points on your corners here and put a little pin in. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the corner. And then you kind of just kind of, you know, ease it out and find your middle. And we're gonna put a little pin in there too. And now when I sew this, I've got some nice stopping points to make sure that if there is any discrepancy or maybe the feed dogs are moving things along in a weird space on your sewing machine, you've got some points. You know you're going to start here. You can get the middle in line and, and figure it out here. And then you can sew through to the end and it's going to work out just fine. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and sew that with a quarter inch seam on my sewing machine. Whenever I pin at the top, I usually just leave it in place long enough to get it under the foot of my sewing machine. And then I will remove it before I start sewing. Now I just want to make sure that the edge is nice and lined up with the edge of my presser foot. And when I get to the middle, I can slow down, remove that pin, and then grasp the ends and keep those together as you go. When you get to the end and you want to pull your pin, what I like to do, because I can't hold down in here anymore, is I put my finger to the side and I use that to guide to make sure I get a nice straight quarter inch seam all the way to the end of my block. Because if you are have some inconsistencies there, then your blocks are not going to turn out the size you want them to and you're going to have wonky blocks that are not square. So that's very important. So I'm going to press the seam open. I love pressing my seams open. It makes for great joints and I feel like it also helps keep things to be the correct size because when you press it over, it eats up just the teeniest little bit of fabric and then that can affect how it turns out in the end. So once I press down and I'm making sure that I have a nice straight seam, if you see any wiggles, it means there's a pleat on the other side and you've got to fix that. So we're going to flip it over and I'm just going to press from this side as well just to get that as flat as possible. All right, so now I've got my top piece sewn to my block. So now I'm just gonna sew my side piece on. And again, I'm just gonna flip that right sides together. Now again, if you are a newbie, I suggest that you pin at the top, center, and bottom. I'm just gonna go ahead and sew and make sure everything is eased in properly as I go down that seam. So when I talk about easing things in, once I get to about halfway through, what I do is I line up my corners and I just will kind of give that a little bit of a tug. Not enough to stretch it, but enough to give it enough tension so that everything is nice and straight. Because occasionally things will get off a little bit as so. So that's it. That's all we have to do for our blocks. 
but putting it together is a little bit more complicated than your standard quilt, so we're gonna go over that. But just make sure you follow your pattern instructions because there's two different sizes of squares and one side of rectangle, but they're gonna be orientated in different ways. So you gotta make sure that you're doing the correct amount and with the correct orientation, but it really is that simple. I sewed two nights and after my kids went to bed and had all my blocks done and then got my entire top done the next day. So it was just, it was the fastest, easiest, stash with Stephanie quilt that we have ever done. So if you need a break, you need a nice mental break from something challenging you did, this is a great quilt for it. All right, so I'm not able to show the entire section on the overhead camera because it is just too large. Um, what I did was I went and I laid everything out on my bed and then I would follow the pattern diagram to get everything in the correct spot. And then I took photos of each section so that way I could easily tell if I had gotten something off when I was putting it together and make sure that I was able to lay everything out correctly when I put things back together. Um, but it is not hard. We've got diagrams that show you how to do it and when to assemble each part. And we're gonna be able to do this so that there are no partial seams. So you can see that here we've got a nice vertical area and here we've got some side to side bits that we're gonna do. And so I've got it all laid out to where it's just all nice straight seams so it can go together pretty quickly and easily. So I'm gonna start by sewing this section together and we'll show you some of the photos of, of the different sections that I put together. So that way you can sort of see how I did this in my brain. But essentially we're gonna put together four sections, two of them are going to repeat for the top and the bottom. And it really is just super fun. And as you can see, really shows off that fabric. and. It's, it's just a lot of fun for that. All right, so this first part, what I need to do is I need to sew this entire row together vertically. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip these guys right sides together. And I've got some seams to match there. So when you are doing it from an overhead, like that, or when you've pressed them open, I just make sure that everything is matched up. And it's pretty easy to see because we've got light on one side and dark on the other. So I'm just gonna put a pin in the seam allowance on the right side. That way when I'm sewing, I can sew down here and stop when my needle is down in this half of the seam allowance and then keep on going. All right, so I'm just gonna set that there. And then I've got these to match up as well for the bottom. So that's what we're gonna start with. We're just gonna get this row together. All right, so I've got my first sets of two sewn together. And what I'm gonna do now is just join the entire row before I press. That way I can have, be a little bit more efficient in how I put this together. You can kind of see how sewing on the top and the side creates that uh, background for us without having to think about it later. You can see it just provides all that empty space so that the fabrics can shine all on their own. All right, so I'm just gonna flip these guys right sides together, pin and sew, and that first vertical row is pretty much done. All right, so I'm just gonna press these seams open. And to do that, I'm just lifting and pressing my iron so I don't accidentally hit any of those other seams. And then I'm just gonna work my way down the rest of the area. And it's only in this big long row, it's just three seams. So it really is it's just so fast because we're using that fabric nice and big. Whenever I finish sewing a row together, what I like to do is hit it with my spray mister. These are actually meant for hair salons and you can get them on Amazon. We'll include an affiliate link in the description box below. What it does is it helps me avoid putting a water in my iron, which can reduce its lifespan. And it allows me to still get that nice flat seam that you would get only with steam otherwise. All right, so our first vertical row is done. I'm gonna set this to the side for now because we've gotta do some horizontal rows next so that we can complete our section. All right, so now I've got several bits that need to be sewn from side to side. And there's one more that you can't see on camera because this is big, um, but it goes super, super fast as you can see. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip these guys right sides together. And for these, I did pin them because it is kind of easy when it gets to be such a large seam for it to not go together the way you thought it would. So what I do is I typically, I pin uh, at that join. There's nothing underneath it, no seams to match, but it's just a good idea to do it. And then I'm gonna grab, pin that corner again, and then lay it nice and flat and pin my center. I'm gonna repeat that for the next two. All right, so now I'm just gonna sew my quarter inch seam and we'll press open. Now at this point, I would bring everything back over to my bed and I would lay everything out in the way it's supposed to be. So that way I can double check with the 
layout diagram and also the photos on my phone to make sure that I have everything where I wanted it to be. Now what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to actually flip up, I've got my short one down here. So I'm gonna flip this up and I'm gonna pin the bottom first and then I'm gonna pin the top so I can save a little bit of time and sew it all at the same time without having to bring it back and pin and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this so that the seam I need to pin is away from me. I've got a couple of seams to match at this point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that my seams are matching right here. And same as before, I just look at it from above to make sure that those seams are lying right on top of each other. And then I'm gonna pin in the right side of that seam allowance. Now I'm gonna work my way over. Now some of these will have seams to match on both sides, some not so much. So it just depends on where you're at. But in this case, I've got two to match right next to each other. Now, just in case there are any differences in the way I cut or sewed my two units, I'm also gonna pin in the middle. That way I can easily ease that in without having a big bunch right here before my seam. And then I'll just pin the corner here as well, just for good measure. Now I can flip it back over and I can go ahead and pin this one to the top. This way what I can do is I can pin, sew this side first and flip it open and then sew the other side and then I can press everything all at once and make it more efficient. See this one we don't have any matching seams except for right over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and line that one up first and then just pin intermittently in about the quarters of the other side. Get the corner and then I just kind of grab them from the sides and lay it back down I like to walk my fingers through to the center, get those edges nice and lined up. Then I know that that's evenly distributed and I can do the same thing to quarter it off. All right, now I'm ready to sew on this side, open it up and sew on that side. So now the section that I sewed together in horizontal rows is ready to add to the section that I sewed together into a vertical row. So that's how we're able to make it work. So you can have the seams like this go next to this one without having partial seams because that's a pain in the rear. No one wants to mess with that. All right, I'm gonna flip these guys right sides together, turn and pin, and then this section is all done once I get it sewn and pressed. When I'm pinning these, what I'd like to do is start where I've got matching seams. I only have one in this section. Then the rest I just do about quarters again and halves. This a final press and then our section is complete. All right, so here we have it. We have a large section complete. This is the smallest of the four sections that you're going to create. Again, two of them are gonna be created twice for the top and bottom of the quilt. I really like how this really shows off all the fabric very nicely and the background provides that eye for a place to rest so that way all of it can just uh, shine in its glory. One thing I really tried to do as I was laying everything out on my bed is make sure that I was uh, doing a good mix so I didn't have too many teals like right next to each other like I made sure that you know this one has a lot of the colors in it from the line and this one just has three uh, four if you count white and so we've got the yellow kind of spaced out we have the light next to the dark and we really have light, medium, and dark values mixed in really well. Cause you don't want your eye to get drawn to one area cause you have like a bunch of teal in that area and a bunch of pink in another. It just doesn't work very well if you do it that way. But it is super cute, it is super fun, and it is super, super fast. So I hope you enjoy this pattern. Again, it's called grid work and it is, it's easy. It's, it's so fast, it's so easy. It doesn't go together in a traditional row by row, but that is the only thing that is a little bit different about this quilt, but it's not not hard. You just need to take a little bit extra time, maybe go lay it back out and take those photos like I did on my cell phone to make sure that I was laying everything back out in the right spot so I could compare my photos to my layout diagram and make sure everything was good to go. 
All right, so if you haven't joined Stashing with Stephanie, please check it out. We have a lot of people who really love it. You get fat quarters every month uh, at a discount, and then you also get exclusive coupons so you can get more. What we do is we put together a finishing kit that works with that month's pattern so you can get just what you need to finish it, or you can get extra yardage if you have another project in mind for what you're looking for, and you get first dibs on everything. Like this fabric line, um, we weren't able to get that much more of it because the club grew a little bit faster than we had estimated it would. So there just is not that much left to pick from. If you're not a member of the club, you may or may not be able to get this quilt. Um, but if you were a member, then you would have gotten first dibs on getting the, well, you've gotten the fabric and then you would have gotten first dibs on the background so you could finish it up and make it and have it, this pretty, pretty quilt on your bed. Again, the pattern is available separately. It's called grid work. So if you just want to get that, you can check it out. And if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe over on Facebook. And you can also sign up on our website for emails. We send you a 10% off coupon code that you can use on your first purchase. And you can get videos like this in your inbox every week. Thanks so much for following along. And until next week, happy quilting.